From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good Sunday morning. There has been a lot of talk about public schools, parental empowerment, and yes, school choice this week. We'll get into that in just a minute, but first, let's get to the three things you need to know in Texas politics. The state of Texas now has a border czar. Governor Greg Abbott announced his appointment of Mike Banks Monday at the site of the Texas-Mexico border wall. Banks will advise the governor on border matters. According to the governor's office, Banks is a former Border Patrol agent agent with more than three decades of federal law enforcement experience, including 23 years in border security operations. More than half an inch of ice covered Central Texas this week, leaving thousands of Austin Energy customers in the dark. Falling trees and iced power lines were to blame for the outages, opposed to a grid failure like in 2021. Frustration grew as the timeline to have power restored went from 12 hours to unknown. City leaders, including Austin's newly elected mayor, Mayor Kurt Watson acknowledged the city's failure, made calls for transparency, and vowed to make changes to increase reliability. The newly elected members of the State Board of Education were sworn in this week and wasted no time making headlines. The board, which passed its legislative priorities last year, voted 8-5 to five to walk back its stance on school vouchers. Now the board is no longer standing against school vouchers or so-called school choice. The decision by the board comes just days after Governor Greg Abbott said for the first time the type of voucher program he wants to see implemented. That happened Tuesday while the governor was speaking at a school in Corpus Christi. Brian Lopez, public education reporter for the Texas Tribune, is covering the voucher debate. He joined me to talk about the legislation some lawmakers want to pass. You know, public education is always a big topic at the state capitol when the legislature meets. And this session, there is a lot of proposals. There are a lot of proposals on the table. And earlier this week, Governor Greg Abbott talked about how he would implement so-called school choice or vouchers. And this is not a new push. Um, some Republican lawmakers have been trying to pass legislation like this for years now. I want you to first give us an overview of what school choice choice is and the opposition to it. Yeah, so uh, school choice is kind of a broad term used to describe uh, taking, you know, uh, your son, your child out of uh, public school and taking them to a, a charter school or in this case, you know, a uh, private school. Um, so it comes in many forms. In Texas, we already have uh, some school choice, uh, like I mentioned, with free open enrollment uh, charter schools and also homeschool that parents can choose. So this push, uh, when we're talking about school choice in the context of this uh, legislative uh, session, you're going to hear a lot of that school choice. But that is more on the context of taking, you know, uh, public tax dollars and being able to take your child to a private school of your choosing and using that money to kind of pay for tuition, supplies and all that kind of stuff. When it comes to the governor and what he was saying earlier this week, how did he say he would implement the policy? Yeah, so he, this is the first time that we've seen him, you know, explicitly kind of voice a policy that he would like to, to implement, which in this case would be an education savings account. And that's kind of like a sort of like a, a different type of school voucher where essentially, uh, you know, you can take your child out of public school and the state will kind of put a money in like a state a funded state kind of watched account and you can only use it for certain things in this case uh you know there's one piece of legislation that i've seen by senator mays middleton uh in the senate uh that would establish a uh, education savings account that you could use for uh private school tutoring uh supplies um you know even in some cases for higher education uh, i'm not sure how that would work out yet but that that's something that uh, Middleton alluded to. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, these, uh, this under his bill, it would, you would get about $10,000 of uh, state money, taxpayer money uh, to send your child to, you know, a school of your choosing. Some Texas Republicans have long advocated for a school voucher program, allowing tax dollars to follow a student rather than going directly to the public school district. The proposal has gotten a lot of pushback in years past, but this legislative session, there is an even stronger push to pass the policy. Let's continue our conversation on the voucher debate with Brian Lopez, public education reporter for the Texas Tribune. 
When we talk about the opposition to this, and there is plenty of it, what's some of the main arguments? Yeah, one of the main kind of people that, you know, Republicans like Dan Patrick and uh, Governor Greg Abbott will have to convince is your rural school officials and your rural Republican uh, lawmakers, you know, uh, people within their own party, uh, just because, you know, in, in these kind of rural, smaller communities, uh, public schools are really kind of the hub of, you know, jobs and the economy. Um, so anytime you kind of take away, uh, you know, a, a child from that setting, you know, if, if in these rural communities, if kids start leaving and going to private schools, that's going to take away money from that school and leave them in a in a bad shape, essentially. Uh, and, and they're already kind of struggling financially. So something like this would uh, deal another blow uh, for these kind of smaller communities. Uh, so th those are kind of the people that they would have to kind of convince still. And in the past, it's been very hard uh, for for Republicans to convince their, you know, rural Republicans. In the past, rural Republicans have been the kind of the ones to kill this uh, sort of legislation. Yeah, in the past, that certainly has been the case. But, you know, we have new maps and we have some new senators and some new House members. And there seems to be a little bit less opposition from rural lawmakers, even from the State Board of Education uh, to the school voucher type uh, school choice type programs. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be, be interesting to see what kind of transpires here in the next couple of months i think you're totally right in terms of you know uh i definitely haven't seen like a big kind of outrage uh towards uh school vouchers and education savings account from uh you know your more rural lawmakers i have some that have come out but i don't think i think you're right on on that end um it'll definitely i think politics is gonna like on all things is gonna come into play with this uh, you know, one of the the proposals, uh, you know, that I've been hearing from from lawmakers, you know, is saying, you know, another big issue is teacher raises. So, you know, a lot of other lawmakers believe that you can kind of link the two, you know, we'll, we'll get you more money for public schools and, and teacher raises. But, you know, you're going to have to agree to this kind of um, uh, education savings account or whatever at the end might be. Uh, another thing that may be popular with uh, your rural lawmakers is that, you um, Dan Patrick has alluded that he would carve out kind of uh, those rural schools from these areas. So we're kind of going to have to see how that works out, too. Uh, right now, it's kind of really early to tell uh, how this will kind of take shape. Yeah, you you alluded to this just now. But again, this conversation is happening at a time when the teaching profession is really hurting. Educators are leaving a lot of them because of the pay, but also because of the workload. You know, talk to us about the other conversations happening. We have so much of a budget surplus. It seems like teachers would be able to get some raises this session. Yeah, so right now there's a positive conversations around teacher raises and increasing public school uh, uh, budgeting a little bit. Um, I think what will happen here is kind of a, a difference of ideas or ideology how to get there. Uh, both Republicans and Democrats, you know, kind of agree that uh, you know, we, more money needs to be kind of pumped into public schools and especially spe specifically uh, teacher raises. Um, you know, most recently, Representative um, Democrat uh, James Hellerico had, you know, a proposal of raising uh, teacher raises across the board by about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. You know, when talking to Republicans uh, and even some Democrats, you know, they don't know how feasible that number is going to be once you start negotiating. And then also some would rather increase uh how much you know a school gets per student uh, right now a school it, uh, the basic funding is six thousand one hundred and sixty dollars that a school gets and that's like weighted into different averages uh but you know there's one proposal um that would increase that to about seven thousand dollars and that would be adjusted to inflation and that would also help with teacher raises because anytime you increase that basic uh, per student funding uh, thirty percent of that additional revenue needs to go to employee raises. So I think that that teacher raises, employee raises, and public schools has a good chance of, uh, you know, being signed by Governor Abbott um, later this spring. Uh, it just will depend how exactly lawmakers will decide to get there. You can find a link to Brian's stories on school vouchers in the Texas This Week section of KVU.com. That's Texas This Week.